What's up, everybody? Uh, TI Trading was here. Uh, I have had an interesting couple of days trading because uh, the markets have been super volatile and uh, scalping has been hard. Um, and just to be like fully transparent, like today, I only traded two of my funded accounts or t I traded three of my funded accounts. Uh, one I got stomped out on and just decided not to enter again. And the two of my other accounts, one I only made $100 profit and the other one I made uh, $85 profit. Um, just, I'm not, uh, it, the, the volatile moves are hard for me to scalp sometimes and things that typically are being respected aren't being as respected as I'm used to them. Uh, so it's kind of like one of these things where it's like, I want to still capture a trading day on my account, but at the same time, I am also you know, don't want to uh, trade just because I'm trying to force trades. Um, and, uh, you know, certain moves are making me a little bit uncomfortable and that's okay. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about today is I have a question in Discord saying, hi, uh, here, um, is anybody here basically uh, trading higher block size and quantity because his prop firm requires a minimum of two average, I'm assuming this is an average of two minutes a trade, uh, which basically take scalping off the table. Um, let's go ahead and make that pretty clear. Um, so what I would suggest for somebody that is trying to get these higher time time trades, right? As one, probably trading off of a 15 minute, make sure that you have smart money concepts on the 15 minute, make sure you have, um, you know, order block theories, um, and that you have uh, your gaps in there. Um, my gaps for some reason aren't showing. Um, not my gaps, my, um, there we go. My, uh, my fair value gaps. So what I would be looking for are where potentially do we have good trades on a 15 minute, right? Uh, because I want my trades to be longer. And so, you know, this is gets into like more smart money concepts, but we draw this trend line down like this, right? We could uh, fix it. So it's actually on the top of these wicks here, right? And fix it. So it's on the bottom of that touching that bottom wick right here as well so you can see that the we broke this trend right when we come back down we retest the trend but more importantly we also have weekly vwap support so we have multiple confluences of this being a potential support level right and if we capture that uh i tend to try to get out at the first point that i think we have potential rejection which would probably be daily vwap right uh i would be looking to exit my trade around this level and this will give you a nice, like, nice setup. The other thing on the, uh, if you go break this down to the five minutes with smart money concepts by quant view, uh, you can kind of have the same type of, same type of, uh, setup, right? Where, you know, we end up pushing down. You could draw your trend line the same way. Uh, you can clearly see this W pattern, right? Um, and then this push up. All right. And then where I would be getting out is where that daily VWAP is, which is right at this level right there. So that's about a 15 minute trade. So you'd be decent. Uh, this is where it's like, you know, where you're not going to want to trade is you're not going to want to trade probably afternoon um, on days like this. Right. Because uh, afternoon, we do get a lot more chop sideways. So it's tr trying to hold a position. Um, you know, just to try to average your, your time position is probably not great. So I, I would say you want to be looking for these bigger moves, you know, maybe uh, from pivot levels to pivot levels from VWAP reactions, right? Um, I like a lo lot of a good example is like, even if, when we have say somewhat sideways days like this one, right? I zoom in here, right? This is kind of a sideways day. Um, but you can see we're going from pivot, right? where we we're just rejecting constantly off this pivot and then we pull back down from it. Right. Um, shorting this, right. Would probably be a decent trade. You like, right. Um, and usually what I say is like, we like to go pivot to pivot sometimes. So it's like we up at this pivot, we come down to this pivot, right. And now we're bouncing off this pivot. We're coming back up to this pivot. A lot of times we, if we're in a range like that, right. Uh, eventually we will. So this comes down to, making sure that if you're trying to hold trades for longer periods of time, um, VWAP trades, pivot trades, that you're one, it's important not to be over leverage um, because, you know, you might have to hold through some, you know, drawdowns that you don't necessarily want to hold through. Um, so uh, there, there is that. 
I mean, scalping on a Rinko chart though, using a four Rinko, could I, uh, could I hold two minute trades? I pro probably wouldn't. I mean, just being honest with you, this is the Rinko chart with Q Elite, right? Um, not Q Elite, the um, Q Grid, and um, you can see like this is the same move, but it's harder to anticipate, right? Like, like would I just be taking this long here? Um, without any other confluences. No, this is where it's like, I, I would suggest if you're trying to hold trades for a longer time period, definitely be looking at the higher time frames. Um, and you can still do everything kind of in, uh, you know, kind of in um, moderation. This is kind of just gets into like, uh, like, well, I guess let me show you this, for example, right? So we had this move right here where we formed this, this, um, stacked and balanced right you can see the first time we came down to it it takes out part of it the second time we come down to it we take out all of it right so would i could i scalp along off the stacked and balanced absolutely but i also know that now we have a stacked and balanced right above it right where if we come back up to this stack and balance reject and we come back down for this third touch there's probably not a lot of orders that are going to be here to support this level right um, and so this gets into, you know, yes, you could scalp this long. Would this play in your favor temporarily? Yes, but long term, it might not. Um, and so th th this I hate prop firms that have like rules on how long you have to hold a trade because it's just not a lot of times it's not practical. Um, you know, if you're tr trying to scalp on stack and balances or try to scalp on Rinko charts, right? Um, but I, I think, uh, you know, if you're looking at this, it gets into like 50, using a 15 minute chart and smart money concepts. Um, and then you can go down to our wrinkle chart to try to find good entries that are probably going to play out in your favor on a 15 minute chart, if that makes any sense. Um, the other thing that I would suggest for somebody like this, that is with a prop firm one, uh, first off, I want to be very clear, uh, switch prop firms. <laughs> if you can, if you can, if you can't, if like it's, you know, because of where you live or something, uh, the other thing that I would be looking at would be trading oil. Um, I think a lot of my oil trades are much longer. Uh, some of my oil trades are even for days uh, when I trade oil. Right. Um, and again, I'm using a five minute smart money concepts. Right. I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at stuff like this, like where it's like we have this a bunch of say order blocks showing red coming down, right? We have this big order block here with another order block inside of that order block, you see. Um, and we have a rejection. So this is kind of interesting. It's like we have a rejection here, a push down where we make a higher low. So it's still pretty bullish, right? Now, uh, we have another rejection where we pull down and we still make a higher low. We have another one, we pull back, we still make a higher low. And then we have another one here where we don't make a higher low right here where we finally break that, that pattern, right? Um, in this zone is a complete valid entry, right? There's three, there's a couple of different areas that you could enter in. Um, you could enter in once we break this, I would say this level right here, right? You could technically enter when you saw this level be broken, but I want to see a candle close below it, right? Um, and it, that will keep you out of stuff like that right there a lot of times on oil, but I want to see a candle close below that level. So when I see, get this candle that closes below this level, now I'm interested in potentially taking a short and looking for entry, right? A lot of times I like to take my entry off of this eight moving average. So wait till we go back up to it and then take it. Um, but even if you didn't want to do that, because the other potential point of resistance is going to be this support level right here, right? Where you can see how that reacts off this level, right? You want, you could wait for the break of that completely, right? Because now we're, we're not making this, uh, high, these higher lows anymore. We are going down and if we break this level, right, we're probably going to just flush it, right? So you can see how we bounce off of it. We bounce off of it third touch, which is usually it's always the third or fourth touch that seals the deal a lot of times, like where where that level will, will give out. Um, and again, you could use 
uh, stacked and balances to kind of uh, verify this as well, right? Uh, because I'm sure that there were stacked and balances that were taken out here. Uh, but uh, this could be your entry. As soon as we break that level, this could be a valid entry as well. Um, and again, it's like when you're on a five minutes, like a lot of these trades are going to be very much valid, right? Uh, a lot of these trades are going to be, uh, you know, valid in terms of being longer than two minutes or, uh, you know, this gets into you probably will trade, you know, um, not CL, but, uh, you know, the micros. Um, and, you know, I would I, I would suggest that's where I would start to look for longer term trades um, because Rinko's is great and you can use Rinko's uh, for bigger moves even. Um, like, for example, I'm testing a box size of six. Um, what I would suggest that you don't do is uh, if you're testing different scripts and different ideas on Rinko's, right? I would suggest always, uh, one, not to go over 30 seconds um, almost ever in any circumstance, but you can go up to 30 seconds. Uh, and I would say, you know, you can make the box size however big you want. Um, uh, I would say, uh, like, I, I use up to a box size of six on MQ um, and trying to look for these longer, bigger moves. Um, and that has worked out kind of well for me. Um, I haven't so much focused, though, on, uh, you know, getting, uh, you know, using Rinko's for higher time frame trades, right? Uh, some I and, and instead use Rinko's more so to find good entries on larger moves, if that makes any sense. Um, so totally possible. Now, you know, this gets into are you going to be scalping for two minutes at a time? I mean, theoretically, you could, you know, um, on NQ. I mean, just as long as you have a good entry, it just gets hard when you're trying to do what you're trying to do and have a, a two minute minimum trade. You know, I would probably stay away from N, uh, NQ and MNQ. If I was really thinking about it, I would probably go to try to trade oil or at the very least trade ES. E ES moves very similar, um, but ES has like some like, you know, when we bounce on ES, uh, let's see if I can show you what I mean here. Um, when we bounce on ES, let's see if that works or not. Um, let's see, trying to get ES to show up. see there we go so uh when when it comes to es right um es is you know we have these bigger moves here right but a lot of times like when how we react off vwap right is uh can have some nice setups now i'm looking at a one minute right but you can see like we have these nice bounces off of vwap on es a lot of times um and those are pretty tradable um, you know, I can just scroll through and you can kind of see how we react off of VWAP on ES. Um, but it's just not the reason why I would pick ES over NQ is because a lot of times it doesn't have the same type of wicks that NQ sometimes can have, right? Where it's like you can have 20, 30 point wicks, right? A lot of times we won't get as big as wicks on ES. Like we'll still have wicks, of course, but it's just not as violent sometimes. Um, but on the flip side, it's you kind of have the same thing sometimes when you're trying to take profits as well, right? Like you might have a bigger move on NQ than you do on ES. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of those are my thoughts that kind of help people who are on prop firms that, you know, require, um, you know, them to have longer time periods. I would suggest, you know, start looking at the smart money concepts um, by quant view and start implementing that into picking out higher time frame trades and also look at potentially different assets that have more trendy moves like oil. Um, 
So that's it for this video. Make sure you guys like, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.